Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Persona 5. So, before I get started, I need to just, like, fangasm a little bit. I hope you guys don't mind, but oh my god, last episode was so good. Um, and it makes me stop and think and realize and recognize just how much... Okay, so, I... I, I said before I went in that my kind of, if I had to make a guess for the traitor, I thought Akechi was a good guess. And so the fact that he ended up being the traitor, not a huge surprise. I did really, really, really think, though, that the traitor was a red herring. And it was just something the police were saying to try and get me to, con you know, ditch my friends and rat out the other Phantom Thieves. I did not actually think there was a traitor. Um, but the Akechi being the traitor was my second guess. I'm not too, you know, surprised about that. Akechi being the gunman, I completely didn't see coming. And upon reflection, I've been kind of offhandedly thinking about that ever since. And what I ultimately have to say about it is... There was a lot of clues that Akechi wasn't completely what he talked about, and I completely... I won't even say that I missed them, I... Falsely attributed them to bad game design, which is stupid, but... Let, let me kind of go into it. One of the one of the first big clues, and, and, and follow me down the rabbit hole on this one, is that Akechi did not ever awaken to a persona. And I even think I said, I'm like, oh, we don't get to see his awakening? I love the awakenings! Had I stopped and thought about that, though, the fact that we didn't see an awakening is in itself a massive, massive, massive clue. It means a lot that Akechi had an awakening before we were there. Why? Two reasons. One, we already know there's another Metaverse user running around that the that presumably has a persona because he's able to go into other people's palaces, which is something that, other than Futaba, we've never seen anyone able to do. It, it, you, need, you need a persona to survive inside a palace, more, more or less. And number two, the fact that Akechi has an awakened persona means he has awakened to the spirit of rebellion within him. But if you think about that for two seconds, what the hell was Akechi rebelling against? Akechi was just a kind of almost straight-laced detective that was like, what you're doing is wrong and you should stop. You know, and so it doesn't make sense for him to have awakened to his, to his spirit of rebellion within him unless he's not everything that we're seeing. So the fact that he had a persona should have been a pretty major clue of, oh, wait. Secondly, I mentioned this last episode, there also was the issue of when he talked about how he encountered the Metaverse user, the picture that we saw looked like Akechi should be dead. And admittedly, it was just sort of like our impression of what he was saying, and it wasn't really a flashback. It was still very significant that the, the, the picture we saw of the account did not, it was, it was very obviously not realistic. But again, I, I just sort of thought that, that was, okay, well, that's kind of a dumb way of showing that. And I didn't, I didn't think that that itself could be a clue that Akechi was lying. Um, and then the third thing that really should have clued me in was that the fact that Akechi's, like, M.O. didn't really make sense. He's like, oh, we have to go in there and we have to change size heart, but after that we have to stop because changing hearts is wrong. And it's like... Again, I kind of wrote it up to the fact that they needed another dungeon to happen, because I, I kept thinking Akechi was going to change his mind after hanging out with us. I thought he was going to become a member of the Phantom Thieves. And so I kind of wrote that up, okay, well, it's a little bit hypocritical, but I mean, maybe there'll be more depth later. But no, it's because Akechi needed us to go do this because he was setting us up. Um, and so his somewhat hypocritical stance makes sense now, but I never analyzed it before. So... That all aside, I also, before I go on, I, I'm, I'm sorry for talking on so long, but I'm just, oh my god. Um, the other thing that is really awesome about it is that the fact that they had that scene where Akechi walks up right as we enter the metaverse was masterful. It completely set me up to accept his story about having gotten, getting pulled into the metaverse and getting the app on his phone, because that's exactly what happened to Anne. So, I was very, very prepared, and also, Haru's, you know, being able to go in and get a persona without us seeing the awakening also served as kind of a unintentional foundation to make me believe a catchy story. So very well done on part of the game designers. They they put in enough stuff in order to not make me clue in immediately 
that, you know, what Akechi was saying, there, there's some holes in it. Although, now that I realize it, I look back and I'm like, oh, damn, that, 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 and that. Anyway. Do you remember? I don't... <sighs> I, I, I can't do Igor's old voice, and I don't like Igor's new voice. Do you remember? It seems you forgot an important fact while your consciousness was hazy. Um, there's a... Oh, that reminds... Oh my gosh, yes. The other thing, before this goes any further, I want to give you my, the my theory crafting as to what's actually happening right now. Because we saw, whenever Akechi looked at the phone, the uh, metaverse little purple swirled, which indicates that he actually entered the Shadow World, or the Shadowy Realm, or whatever it's actually called. If that's the case, he entered a world ruled by cognition. Except, theoretically, Akechi didn't realize he had entered it. Um, it's quite possible that he's only used to going through the app, and so being able to go back and forth into the world... Like, because I do it every time I go to sleep, practically. So, I'm very used to being in a Shadow World that looks exactly like the real world. But I, I, he may not have necessarily noticed. If that's the case, then Kaizen could have been aware of the fact, you know... Uh, ultimately, so here's what I think happens. We, we know that knowing which specific room that Kaizen was going to be in was very important. And I feel like what is ending up happening is that um, Futaba hacked the Shadow World in order to create a set of rules surrounding this Shadow uh, interrogation room. The real thing I think she did there is she caused any guns in there to be replaced with IYE's model guns. Um, Kaizen held fast to the knowledge that the gun was not real and could not, could not hurt him. And so whenever he was shot, Kaizen just slumped forward. Akechi, however, not knowing about the change in rules within that space, expected Kaizen to die and therefore, because that's an area ruled by his perception, he saw Kaizen die. So, to Kaizen, since it's not anyone's palace, no one's cognition reigns supreme, Kaizen slumped forward in order to sell the illusion, and Akechi bought the illusion because he expected Kaizen to be dead, is what I think kind of happened. It is a little weird, I'm not quite sure how Futaba can hack the Shadowverse, but we know that she can. Whenever she comes in and gives us buffs, that's kind of exactly what she's doing. And then in her fight in her palace, we directly saw her just making a ballista out of nothing. So we know she has that ability. Indeed. Your death was a necessity for your escape from certain doom. Well, yeah, because he was going to shoot me in the head. <laughs> what a tremendous plan. That said, however, one of my pseudo... It's really, if, if I have it right, and I know what, and I am correct in what they actually did, it's super ballsy and super cool, but also super unnecessary. You know, I mean, I guess if, if we're just trying to throw Akechi off the scent and make Akechi think that we're dead, or try and see... I, my best guess is we want to see who reacts and who um, has a plan in place to move in when the Phantom Thieves' death is announced, that may, it makes a little bit more sense. As it stands, we have the phone. We could have just left, you know? Um, Sai would have given it to us, and she had no idea that would let, like, allow us to escape. How might you be capable of executing such a feat? Because i got friends, and I thought about them. Well then, let us rouse the memories which are missing. What, is this a flashback? Am I going to have to relive parts of the game now? The first time I sensed something was off. That's right, it was during the school festival. Uh, that's right, there was this weird haze that came in right then. Because someone told me the memories that I'm, like, seeing bits of... Hey, they're going! Um, you know, was the section of the game where that like, weird fog thing happened. And I remember I talked about it, I'm like, what is it? What was that? You realized it too, then. It was our conversation about pancakes, right? I do not remember any conversation about pancakes, There's though. There's no way he could have reacted like that if he hadn't heard me. So... Like... Yeah, we can't trust him. My thoughts exactly. It was your social studies trip. We met him in the hallway of that TV station. We did, I remember that. 
There's no way that this is the first time he's heard my voice. That is... I can't... Now I vaguely do remember that uh, discussion. And I don't remember if I tuned into it at the time or not. Because I'm so used to reading Morgana. It, it, it does... You know, little sections where someone hears more gun that shouldn't be able to are not things I noticed necessarily, and I should, and I should have paid more attention to that. But granted, it's uh. this whole deal feels sketchy. Yeah, let's do some research. Knowledge is the answer to sketchiness. Yeah, that was my plan too. You can't even hold a book. Okay, let's get everyone on the same page right away. There's something else we want you to look into. I almost voice acted that because there was such a delay between the in, in the ellipsis. The ellipsis took forever. One more person has been on our mind. If it's possible, <laughs> I want to eavesdrop on their phone conversation. So that's how I heard what he said in the hallway before he got there. I wondered because that kind of came out of nowhere. Hmm, that'll be tough. You can do it, Futaba. You're a masterclass super hacker girl person, man. I agree. <laughs> I agree, Futaba can do it. Wagata is so good at pep talks. Hmm. I'd have to plant a bug directly on the phone. So it's impossible even for you. That that doesn't seem I mean you were able to eavesdrop on our IM messages. I didn't say it was impossible. I've got a plan. We should take him swimming. That way he has to put his phone down. Hey! That's perfect. Don't keep secrets from me, Futaba. Bad sister! Are you keeping it a secret? Don't worry. I'll tell you the details later. <laughs> Futaba's going to do something! the idea that, you know, what she actually just did is she went, I'm going to do something! <laughs> I wonder if it'll be okay. This is gonna be fun. I can't wait! <laughs> I see. So we're going to use this place. So how did they get access to the interrogation room early? I mean, granted, I uh, I guess Makoto may have had something to do with it, but she shouldn't be able to get down here. However, if this is an area of the facilities that are only used for high-profile interrogations, it is possible that we swipe Sai's card because there's no one here to know that we're here, you know? It'll be a gamble. I think it's gonna work. You can't tell a thing. Can't tell a thing. What did did they somehow fake the interrogation room? Is this a um? Oh, what what is it called? Whenever you a fabrication. It's actually funny. Um, little little bit little backstory. People are probably like, play the game. I'm sorry. Um, but for years I thought fabrication was just like a uh, imagined lie or something. I didn't realize it actually had a um term of whenever you use metal in order to make a um, fake thing or a prototype thing it seems you finally remember I do thank you Igor I appreciate the memories high five this game is not over yet man, I wish you quit calling the game they're literally trying to kill me man there are still things that must be done Igor is so meta, he's like, you're not finished playing the game yet. And I'm like, yeah, I know. I've got one more palace. I think we're just trying to become clear. That's right. This is the this is what really happened to me at that moment.
Oh, it wasn't even a real guard. Wow, that was... How, how... Hold on. That doesn't make any damn sense. If that wasn't a real guard, because the guard was there before he saw the app. Does that mean that somehow Sai was interrogating me within the metaverse as well? Um, because she definitely saw the guard when she came in. <laughs> yes, I would like to say my current progress. I kind of also want to go back and make a save there and just like keep it forever because that was a cool section. Oh, wow. Okay. Wait, my previous save was... Oh, I guess... Okay, no, the previous save and then... Wow, so I si didn't have a whole lot of time and spent 24 hours talking to me? I, apparently the police measure not a lot of time very differently than I do. Innocent? It makes no sense. We do, we do need new authority. And that truth's lost in the void. I heard they originally won the Phantom Thieves! Yeah, I didn't expect him to commit suicide. He's a murderer! He deserves to die! You can finally breathe easy now. He killed himself. Well, I guess we'll never know his motivation. Someone's exhausted. I don't. I don't know who's talking. Because my conscience is about to fade away. <sighs> hey, are you all right? Don't fall asleep until we reach our destination. Are you listening? Yes. May, I, it may be the like effect of being talked to for a full twenty-four hours in a row without being allowed to sleep. My memories I thought were gone are starting to come back. Well, we're now on the twenty-first. Are you listening? What, what were you? What, when did you turn into your sister? I mean, when did your sister turn? Uh, 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 hi. You weren't paying attention. Well, I guess I can see I'd be lost in thought right now. Anyway, we need to talk about how to get out of this situation. Futaba is monitoring it because his phone has confirmed it. He did indeed have an ulterior motive. See, it's on a completely different level than just that. Trying to frame us, but he was the true culprit behind the mental shutdowns. His offer to assist us was simply a plot to frame the Phantom Thieves and to kill Kaisekun. If we go to Sis's palace, as he suggests, will likely, likely be led by a large ambush of police forces. Okay, no, this is not okay. So this this is before we go um, in order to steal uh, uh, Sai's treasure think you would be this far gone. I know now what it means to feel a chill down my spine. Furthermore, he wishes to bring a police squad from reality into the palace. If the eight of us can enter at once, it's not inconceivable to think a large group is possible. He may even be able to bring in vehicles or other special pieces of equipment. So, this really was a setup to- Shut up? Wow, shut up. A setup to shift the blame on us? Yeah, he made us go after Okumura, and then when we triggered the change of heart, he killed him. And he told us he, said the true he had seen the true culprit, but it was him the entire time. Wow. I know this isn't what she meant, but I love the idea that Haru is like... Haru's like, yes, he killed my father, and he also lied to us! I meant the whole time he's working with the Bakoda's sister, he was really just some homicidal, homicidal maniac. Come on, we gotta take that bastard to catch you down. Is the recording got enough proof to do it? No. I can't use a tool. Zora's come from elsewhere. The Grand Mastermind behind this all. An unimaginable fiend capable of arranging the murder of a suspect at the police station. Unless we can find out who that is, we're continuing to be targeted even if we defeat a catchy. And apparently the monitor on his phone is not enough to trace the call. Come on, Futaba! What means we have of learning his identity? Not to make a catchy say it. Once we do that, Mastermind will likely eliminate us. I think that would be the case.
case eventually regardless of whether or not we learn his identity. So that's, I mean, okay, so we now know who it is because when Akechi was leaving the station, he said Shido, and Shido was like, don't say my name. Although I have to wonder why we thought Akechi would say the name after he killed Kaizen. That's that's certainly a very dangerous leap of logic. The reason it hadn't happened yet is because we're an easy target to blame for his crimes. If he realizes he's no longer possible and abandons that plan, he may have to kill us immediately. Damn it! So we don't got a choice but to do what the ambassador suggests. Yeah, but if we go into the cat, palace is told Kaisen will get arrested and then murdered by Akechi. Palace? Oh, the palace! Actually, there's something I'd like to say regarding... Uh, we can use the palace to our advantage! What? What's this all of a sudden? There's a way! A way to get past Akechi and get the mastermind to lay off us while learning his identity. God, I'm smart! You gotta be kidding me! If he wants to kill Kaizen, why not let him? Wow! Mona, sicker! Like, I know that this is gonna work now, but I'm sure hearing that I'll be like, wait, what? That is inside the palace. We could have him kill the cognitive Kaizen, all the while believing he killed the real one. Seems it's our only option. But if your cognition dies, doesn't the real one have a seizure and die as well? Because like, that's exactly how he killed the principal, isn't it? And also the SIU director. Listen close, everyone. I plan for how we can carry this operation. Ever since the death of their teenage leader, the Phantom Thieves have fallen silent. However, the police intend on continuing this investigation until the case is fully solved. I'm sorry I'm late. I had to finish a few things at work. Where are they? I... 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 I oh, God. I, I hope this is when Sai approaches with Kaizen and not, like, later. Because I would... Not seeing Sojuro's re realization that uh, Kaizen's still alive would be a tragedy. Waiting upstairs. Go tell them to come on down. God damn it! They did. They skipped over because Sojuro th presumably was not in on it, and so just saw the news reports blind. I'm fetch him. Well, I am rather fetching. You're her sister, correct? Makoto told me everything. I missed that one, too? Oh my god, why? It would have been so much better to have a scene, you know, between Makoto and Sai, where, because even though Sai is sort of on our side, I, I still feel like, you know, she'd be like, what were you thinking, joining a, like, criminal group? Futaba-chan, I'm sorry that I caused you so much trouble this past summer. Eh, it's ancient history now. We had to go to the ancient pyramids in order to sort it out. I hope you're appreciative. Man, that goddamn detective. I do have to say, I'm very, very glad that Akechi had some sort of twist in his... I, I hadn't thought about this before, but... If he was just another detective prince, I would be like, Okay, well, you're just like a poor man's Naoto. Look who's here. Okay, this is when I show up, but hey, apparently Sergio already knew. Hey, man! How've you been? I mean, I've died. <laughs> you must be fine if you're joking around like that. Well, you know, gotta love it to you. Gotta add a little levity to the mood, and no better than making ghost jokes. It truly is a relief to see her face. I bet that moron Akechi don't even know we tricked him yet. Don't even know? How about doesn't? Come on, Ryuji. I know you suck at English, but... Still, how'd you pull this off? Yeah, I, 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 I don't understand how Sojiro can be so okay with this. Without, I also wanted to know where I was hiding, because he went outside to get me. Isn't this guy considered dead? You weren't told anything? Yeah, that was kind of... I mean, I really wish I'd seen the scene where I came back. 
I heard my sister brought him here, though. What? What? She's standing right behind you. Yeah, she came over in a taxi, dumped him off, and told me to keep him safe. It was right after they announced he had died, too. Almost gave me a heart attack. Yeah, why didn't we see that scene? I didn't awesome have time scene. to explain. Hey, shouldn't we tell Boss what really happened? I... yes, absolutely. We wanted to make our enemy believe the leader of the Phantom Thieves was dead. So we let him shoot the leader in the head. What? What we did was make that enemy kill his fake in the metaverse. I, I think you may have to go back further to explain. Uh, hold on a sec. Enemy? Fake? What are you talking about? The true culprit behind all these incidents set us up. Our goal here was to determine their identity. And we did that, didn't we, Futaba? True culprit? I see. So you guys were going up against someone else. Poor surgery. He's like, can't you just be students? It was Goro Akechi. You knew beforehand that he was the traitor, didn't you? Um, it, he was my best guess if there was a traitor. Yeah, Akechi messed up. Akechi himself gave us the chance to strike back. And we took the chance with both hands. He made one fatal mistake. He talked about pancakes. Couldn't you have just said from the beginning that Akechi was the real culprit? That wasn't something we could simply bring up. We couldn't have you suspect Akechi. Besides, neither you nor the other investigators would have believed something like that, would you? That is a very true statement. True. Akechi was credited with the arrest of the Phantom Thieves. Not even I would think he was the culprit. In other words, you left him alone on purpose. That was a bold move. This is where bold began. God, I can't keep up with any of this stuff. I know, I kind of feel sorry for Boss. I, I, they need to do a better job explaining. Uh, wait, so what was this mistake Akechi made? What did he do? He talked about pancakes. I already said that. He slipped up in regards to Morgana's voice. You mean a cat? Yes, Morgana can talk. Uh, uh... <laughs> okay, th this doesn't make up for not seeing the scene where um, Kaizen came home, but I, I, I am enjoying Sojuro's like... <laughs> Sorry, was that supposed to be a joke? Oh, our apologies. That's completely true. You surprised? Does that mean... He said something just now as well? But you don't understand him, do you? That's how it was for all of us at first, too. Yeah, until you go into the metaverse, you don't... I don't know why I'm telling you guys this, you know that. When you're in the metaverse, Mona talks like a normal person. Once you hear that and your brain realizes he can actually talk, you start to understand him in reality. It's a change in cognition, most likely. <laughs> Thanks to Akechi's lame acting, we figured out something was up. And Boss like, what's a metaverse? When we talked to Akechi at the school festival, he was acting like he just realized Mona could talk. But we already saw him drop a mega hint about it way earlier. I don't know about a mega hint, I certainly didn't pick up on it. Oh, I know a place! I want to go to that huge pancake looking place we passed on the way here! Oh, am I mistaken? I thought I heard something about delicious pancakes. Yeah, I completely missed that. And Akechi was around the corner, so we didn't actually realize he had to pretend not to know that. Mona was the only one who was talking about a pancake. That meant Akechi would already been in the metaverse by then. And since he was lying to us about that, we assumed he had a hidden motive behind contacting us. All right, that's certainly... Uh, things are starting to come together. I'm also somewhat glad that I correctly figured out Akechi's plan. It seemed odd upon further thought. His reaction to my pancake comment was an honest one, after all. Yeah, we did get that lucky. Said, we weren't so naive to overlook something like that. Because the only reason he slipped up is that he was around the corner and he didn't realize Mona was the one that said it. That's why we asked Batabachan to wiretap his phone. Poor boss. 
I pretended to be interested in checking the phone out, but I was actually planting my app. My heart was pounding while I was doing it, though. Even that ace detective could never have imagined a program being installed so quickly. Futaba's quirky nature proved to be a great help. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying it. That was just an act! That is not an act, Futaba. After a few days of listening, this confirmed his betrayal. Then I'll guide the police into her palace and have them catch the phantom thieves in the act. I like that this is Akechi's voice talking. That would be the only way to arrest them, given their methods. I'll deal with them after that. Let me see. We could say he stole the guard's gun and committed suicide during his imprisonment. How about that? Public security questioning will occur on the first day. And with that room, my task will be simple. Okay. Is this for real? Yes, the guard will be one of ours. We'll have to eliminate him after to destroy the evidence, though. So they plan to get rid of that guard from the beginning. Absolutely. Well then, I will make the arrangements the day after the arrest. And thus, the dangerous criminal responsible for the mass mental shutdowns shall end his own life. When he does, you will become a great hero who saved Japan from evil. As will I, of course. So like, was our original plan to see who stepped in and tried to take credit for it? Although, like I said, I guess she's gonna straight up say his name. I knew he was acting strangely, but to think he was this far gone. Hey, Sai, now that Akechi's gone, I do have a, like, opening on my team. You interested in dressing up like a thief? He's no ace detective. Akechi is the perpetrator behind the mental shutdown crimes. You already have, like, a cleavage gown, so you can just keep that. On top of that, there's someone else commanding Akechi. Someone with great authority. So great that they can order an assassination in a police station. That's why we had to make a move before they did. I see. Didn't I tell you to just go to school? We baited Akechi into Sis's palace, making him dispose of our leader's fake, but think he killed him. So was that a fake the entire time? Because I thought that was my cognition, like my legit cognition. How would my fake have gone through that entire story? Can you elaborate on that in more detail? What exactly happened in my cognitive world? We're sorry for using you without your permission. Your palace had all the conditions we needed. <laughs> what conditions? It was a palace. First, we required a place inside the cognitive world that was the same as in reality. That place is based on the real world after all. Anywhere that's not warped looks just like normal. And that's why nobody but the person who uses the nav even realizes they're in the metaverse. Yeah, that's... and that's why you have to show them the phone. Back with Kamoshida, we came in from the station without even noticing. And yeah, that's where we got to school. You totally can't tell the difference if there ain't any distortions around. We had already investigated Nijima-san's palace when Makoto brought the suggestion to us. Okay, that makes sense, that makes sense. I was seriously impressed by that suggestion. Well, you're just seriously impressed by women. To be honest, I didn't quite understand it, but I went along with it. Yeah, we had to... I, I, I am willing to say, since we needed to know, um... Shido's name, that we, you know, this was kind of what we had to do in order to try and find out who was bossing Akechi around. And it was absolutely the best decision we could have made. Makoto is normally so calm as well, but once her mind is set, she gets oddly impulsive. <laughs> I did have a bit of a rivalry forming with Akechi. And I won! But I just couldn't contain myself anymore once you became a target, sis. The reason I joined the Phantom Thieves was to heal your heart, after all. My own achievements were all that mattered to me. I was desperate. I wasn't myself at all. 
I'm glad that Sai can acknowledge that she was kind of not great. I'm sorry I couldn't see that. That goes for the both of us. We heard from Mako-chan that you were going to do the interrogation, Mijima-san. And regarding its location, I take it you used the data from my laptop? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. There were two things we were able to confirm while we were checking the metaverse. First, our clothes didn't change when we were down in the interrogation room. That is a very important thing. Second, the scenery and details outside of the palace proper were the same as in the real world. Once we heard that from Makoto, we secretly went to check it out without a catchy knowing. There was also one more thing we absolutely needed to make this work. I still don't understand how you got Sai's palace to replicate the interrogation room and have a catchy approach it from the police station without realizing, because I guess the police station is probably relatively close to I I think it may actually just be that they keep saying size palace but size palace probably extends into the interrogation rooms you know there's just like it, that's also technically part of her palace is my guess it's not like there's a interrogation room under the Department of Justice or maybe actually do they transport criminals to the courthouse for interrogations I would assume the interrogation would happen in the police station a perfect cognitive replica of him in the metaverse's interrogation room since he had yet to be caught, though, there obviously wouldn't be anyone in that room. Once we saw the casino guests and police officers, we were convinced this would work. They looked no different from actual living people. Okay. I still don't know how- so how did my cognitive double tell the entire story so flawlessly? I mean, unless it's- because if it's actually my cognitive self, it makes sense, but if it's a fake... After that, we just had to work our way into the palace like usual, while keeping it catchy in the dark. Everything went as planned up until we defeated Sis's shadow. I also have to wonder if, does that mean that Kaizen was actually, no, because Kaizen came on with Sai, so Kaizen was legit captured, so what, was he hiding in the freaking corner of the room the whole time and, you know, having a double to answer all the questions and no one noticed him, or what, what? However, it was then that we were met with a terrifying, unexpected police ambush. As a result, even though we managed to grab the treasure, we couldn't get it out of the metaverse. That's surprising. It wasn't that big or heavy. Except that was all an act. Oh, I was going to... I was going to say, so I didn't actually have a change of we heart. We prepared an empty briefcase beforehand and merely acted like we were taking the treasure. This was because we knew the police would be coming for us. We made sure before the operation that the police would be waiting to ambush us. This is incredibly, like, double counter spy... Reverse trick sneak. And just as expected, he totally took the bait. Him getting captured by the police went exactly how we planned it. And I had been interrogating him with no knowledge of this. Yeah, who was she interrogating? That's my big but question. How did you lure Akechi into this cognitive world's interrogation room? That's the big question I have as well. All I needed were the coordinates. <laughs> <laughs> I should go about it now. I drive the conversation on too long. I should talk to her later. Akechi disposed of the fake in the palace and left thinking he had been victorious. I, again, so it's like, but basically what they're saying is that I was in the real world interrogation room, um, and then Akechi went into the metaverse, because that's the, I didn't realize that the fake would be in there, and Akechi wouldn't be able to see me, there. although I guess it makes sense, because when you're in a palace, every once in a while you'll get to an area where it will shimmer and you can see the real it world. It must have been truly hilarious for our leader who sat idly in the real world's interrogation room. Surely, he was acting quite cocky by himself in that quiet chamber. 
Yusuke, stop fanfictioning. So that's why you gave me your phone. I only took it because of what you told me. Ah, it's a shame I didn't have the opportunity to see that for myself. Just paint a picture of it. All I could do was try to handle all the messages that started coming to me on his phone. Huh. So in other words, I've been to the metaverse. Albeit for a brief moment. In our experience, there is little danger when someone enters their own palace for so short a time. Yeah, because you only had the phone for about 30 seconds. But that does beg the question of why... I guess since she wasn't aware she was in the metaverse, that's why she can't understand Mona. That's the other reason we had him give it to you. We needed you to listen to Alibaba, deceive the guard, and ultimately aid in his escape. By having you head back to the interrogation room, we could return you to the real world as well. I mean, I had to think of some way to keep you from running into a catchy mid-assassination. Huh. Astounding. I hadn't the slightest idea that such a grand operation was taking place within me. Well, that sounds a little, um, <laughs> dodgy. I'm so glad he was able to persuade you during the interrogation. Even though we knew Akechi's plan, we were pretty worried about that part. <laughs> True. That is the big thing. I, especially since we didn't get her treasure out, I don't know why she like basically agreed to break a you know national criminal out of the clinker. How'd she even get me out? Why is that? Without Sis on our side. Futaba's plan and subsequent breakout would have never been possible. That persuasion was easily our greatest gamble. We couldn't consult Sis beforehand. It was absolutely the make or break moment of the entire plan. And I do, I, I do, I, I don't feel like the actual side would have done that. Still, I'm surprised you could convince me in such a short time. Were you confident you could do it? No, I was confident that you were a confident. A confidant. Ooh. Don't remember drugs. Understandable. Either way, I can't believe you went for such a risky idea. Well, you know, I, I like risks. If we could just tell you the true culprit's plan, I knew you'd realize the bigger picture. Realize that our leader was telling the truth, and that there was a greater evil to pursue. It's interesting that Makoto says greater evil, somewhat tacitly acknowledging that what we are doing isn't right. As a result, we emerged victorious. Then the reason you kept this a secret from me was so you could catch the true culprit, correct? Yes. Plus, you had lost control of yourself at the time. Alright. And with that, unfortunately, we are at 43 minutes, so I'm going to have to cut it again. I'm very sorry to cut it as often as I am, but I, I don't want these episodes to go on forever. And also, my brain is kind of baking at the moment. Um... <laughs> Oh my gosh, it's, it, it does make sense. I understand everything that happened. Um, I still boggle slightly. I, I almost like my interpretation of events more than what they're showing here, but it this makes a little bit more sense now with the worlds being separate. Um, here's the question, though. Because they said they had to bring Sai back in order to get her back to the real world. Does that, does that mean that Akechi is not aware? He, is, is Akechi still in the... Uh, Shadow World? Or, more correctly, is it once you leave the palace, you automatically come back to the world? I think that's what happens. I think that once Akechi would leave the um, Justice Area, Justice Department, he would naturally go back to the real world without really realizing it. So that's more likely what happened. So I, I, I don't think that's quite correct, but hey, maybe it'll come up. The game has certainly had minor things that I think are, you know, trivialities, and they become super relevant. So maybe this will be one of those. Thank you very much for tuning in, guys. I will see you tomorrow.